Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Uh, today th- we're going to talk about the discovery of a creature that lived in trees but stood on its hind legs 11 point, I think, 6 million years ago, which basically sets back the, the date of bipedalism uh, way earlier than they thought. I think the next closest or the next oldest quote evidence of of a of bipedalism or a high ch- like a likely chance of a bipedal creature is about 4.4 million years ago so that's more than double almost triple um the amount of time that bipedalism goes back for the longest time bipedalism or uh the ability to walk on two two legs and two feet was a uniquely human uh, thing it, it a lot there are a lot of things associated with bipedalism um, all these different uh, advantages fr- that come with that well, again we're thought to have gone back only uh, uh, 4.4 million years or so something like that uh, but then they find this uh, new species of ape in Germany the the way that the bones are are arranged the way that they put everything together I might have been able to walk on two feet I don't know what the huge resistance to this was F- just from what i can tell my ma- if i were a critic of this i would say oh well you're jumping to conclusions how do you know how do you know that that just from what you found that's directly responsible for for these people or these creatures walking on two feet anyway moving on um the finding challenges the accepted idea that by people walking evolved much later uh, in the ancestors of modern humans that having a skeleton adapted for regularly moving around on two feet is unique and a defining feature of hominins. So I, yeah, basically what I just said. So this newly discovered ape, the Nuvius Guggen Mosi lived 11.6 million years ago in Germany. So it had long arms uh, suited to hanging in trees, but it also had uh, legs and spine suggesting it might also have been able to move around on its hind feet because again, it keeps everything from falling over basically your the way the bones are arranged and the way the spine is the the features associated with the legs and spine and the hips suggest that it it, it was able to carry that weight around while move uh balancing on two feet so the 4.4 million year old hominin arda artipithecus ramidus was clearly bipedal so again that's 4.4 million years ago that i mentioned earlier Hints of bipedalism in some species that are between 6 million and 7 million years old. Um, these were the really controversial ones that predated the clearly bipedal um, 4.4 million uh, homin- year old hominin. But then there were some uh, features of these two as well. D. Guggenmosi, the 11.6 million year old one, suggests that walking on two feet evolved before the hominin branch of the evolutionary tree split from the branch that includes modern chimpanzees and bonobos. So chimpanzees and bonobos don't predate bipedalism. Bipedalism was already a thing by the time they had branched off fr- from the hom- the hominin had branched off of uh, that part of the evolutionary tree seven million years ago. That is one of the uh, groundbreaking things about this uh, about this discovery now. So some questions that come up, what makes things really complex now? basically is what defines hominins if not habitual bipedalism again this goes back to what i was saying earlier bipedalism was always thought to have been a uniquely human thing so now there's this dilemma now how do we define hominins there must be other types of creatures that aren't exactly like the us with the ability to walk around as well as uh move around in in the trees and have that uh the, the arm the, the the arm structure the shoulder structure to do that so they're saying they're hypothesizing that it's a tree dwelling biped basically so almost like this missing link between pure bipedalism and just living in in the trees uh the vertebrae and leg bones and uh particular suggest that d mostly moved around two feet the shapes of some of the vertebrae suggest that the ancient ape had long and flexible lower back so that allows humans and other creatures to stay balanced while walking upright. This is what I was talking about earlier. They're pulling the weight of the torso over the hips. D. Guggenmosi has uh, several weight-bearing adaptations in the knees and ankles, so that makes sense if they're walking on two legs because why else would the body create that support when the creature wouldn't, be do- wouldn't necessarily need that? 
So that is those are the hints that I was talking about earlier. Um, D. Guggenmosi had a unique way of moving around, combination of walking on two feet and hanging on its arms. So th they call it extended limb clambering. So basically, uh, this this creature in Germany, 11.6 million years ago, was living in trees and getting around on the ground. Um, just by going through its body mechanics and its and its bone structure and what where the muscles would have been and all that stuff. Um, Scott Williams, a paleoanthropologist at NYU, says not enough the the spine is preserved to be sure that the ape had a long, flexible lower back. So it goes back to what I was saying. It might be um, you might be jumping to conclusions. That would be the number one uh, uh, needle to poke uh, the the you know the theory in. Uh, that might be quibbling the evidence though. I, I haven't seen the exact, uh, the exact structure of, of the hominin right when it was found. So who knows exactly, um, if that, if this criticism is speculation or not, but yeah, there is a risk of jumping to conclusions here. Um, another paleoanthropologist says it's difficult to work out how apes move just from studying the bone shape. Again, um, you're, you're jumping to conclusions and he cites the discovered the, uh, the discovery of an unexpected diversity in the way mountain gorillas position their hands while walking on all fours so um, the way they walk it might they might not have had bipedalism but they might ha like swing around on the ground on their knuckles in a way that would require the hips and the spine to be flexible that's what he's saying so it might not necessarily a flexible back uh, main and weight bearing uh, uh, adaptations on the knees and ankles might not be directly because of bipedalism. It could be a different type of moving around, so to speak. Um, so there's another study, a 10 million year old pelvis belonging to another ancient European ape and the features of the pelvis again had a long uh, and flexible lower back indicating it might have been a tree tolling biped again because it had both uh, adaptations in its in its bone structure so now this raises the possibility that the knuckle walking chimps and gorillas basically the the whenever you, you say monkey the, the, those are the two creatures you think of despite the false nomenclature um, they evolved from a bipedal ancestor now that's really groundbreaking and really counterintuitive if you're an establishment um, evolutionary biologist because it was always thought that chimps and gorillas always predated uh, bipedalism and because they, uh, at least that's, it was thought that all hominins branched off from them and then bipedalism happened after. Um, but it might be the other way around. It might be that the chimps and gorillas might have had a bipedal ancestor because of the nature of how old these bones are. Um, modern humans might have inherited bipedalism directly from animals such as D. guggenmosi. So again, because D. guggenmosi had the best of both worlds, that branched out and then uh, the, basically spawned specialists in each one. So us, we, we specialize in, in walking. We don't really swing uh, from trees as much as chimps and gorillas do, which is their specialization uh, in this uh, tree, living in a, in, uh, a tree-dwelling type of environment. Um, and then there's always a risk of over-interpretation uh, because you're talking about such a groundbreaking and, and um, a, a huge impactful statement that would if true everything would have to be uh rewritten and reworked so uh, let me know what you guys think is it, it are we subject to interpretation are the scientists jumping to conclusions or are they right on the money and older and older stuff is going to keep coming out just like it has in the past few years we have an 11.6 million year old uh, uh remains of some sort of humanoid and then another 10 million and then we have the, of course, we have the seven, six, and then four, four point four million uh, year old uh, creatures suspected of bipedalism. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. I thought this was a pretty interesting article, and um, it, it, let me know your opinions. Uh, just keep it clean in the comments, and I'll have 
a larger episode about the Scythians later. 